we're about to talk about some stuff in this series, everyone, that the church has screwed up for millennia. The church has a very jaded communication regarding things like sexual orientation, sex, pregnancy outside of wedlock, uh, what to do, is it dating, is it courting? And what I'd like to share with you before I even jump into the sermon, the three reasons why we need to have conversations about sex, love, relationships, orientation, identity, and all of that, why we need to have those conversations in the church. But first, I would like to give a disclaimer really quick. Are there any visitors here in the room? Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Okay, okay, I see you, I see you, I see you. I'm not gonna ask you to, it's not Baptist. I'm not gonna ask you to come up and say nothing. Okay, see you, I see you, I see you. Okay, I apologize for what you are about to hear. Not because what I'm going to say is wrong, but because for many of you, it's the first time that you've heard it. And you should have heard it before you got married. You should have heard it before that first sexual experience. You should have heard it before you clicked on that one site. AWC, I need you to talk to me. Don't leave me out here by myself. Don't do that. Because we're about to talk about relationships, but we're going to use the Bible as a basis. I want you to write these three things down because this is going to be the context for the rest of this entire sermon series. The number one reason why we have to have these conversations is this, because we are called to contend for the faith. In Jude 1 and 3, it says, Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about salvation, uh, to write to you about the salvation that we share, but now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time, his holy people. Jude is writing to the Christian church and he's basically saying, I was hoping that I could have talked to you guys about salvation, but it seems like you guys haven't matured and we still got to talk about who you shouldn't and should sleep with. He says, I, sh I would like to talk to you about how good God is and all the mysteries of the Bible, but we still got to talk about how if you got married, you probably shouldn't be looking at that. Jude tells the, the, the Christian, he says, we could move further in your Christianity, but it seems like we keep having these, these stumbling blocks. And I think as long as the earth is round, as long as I'm black and you are whatever culture you are because we look like a bag of Skittles, which is like the best thing in the world, as long as you are you and I am me, these situations are going to persist and wreak havoc on God's people if we don't talk about them. Now, I know I'm not trying to take the place of be you being a parent. I'm not trying to take the place of whoever you trust to communicate these things. But I promise you by using this thing called the word of God, it's digital. I know the old folks, what are you it's in here. But by using the word of God, we can set a foundation that God will be pleased with our relationships. Really quick, by a show of hands, how many of you want God to be pleased by your relationships? I want you to take a mental inventory. How many of you think that your friend group God is pleased by? How many of you believe that the person you picked to marry glorifies God? I wish I could be up here. Bruh said. <laughs> how many of you would say that how you think about yourself glorifies God? The second reason why we have to have this conversation, number one, is because we're called to contend for the faith. But number two, we have both believers and non-believers trying to maintain relationships with the holy God while also trying to navigate unholiness. I don't know how many of you didn't have social media during the fast, but it was so interesting how quickly I got back on the gram, how quickly the algorithm wanted to make sure I caught up on all the stuff I missed. <laughs> These are all the boobs and the butts you missed. Oh, yeah, I don't want to talk. I'm going to be honest. Is that okay? Can I be your pastor? You just celebrated me. Cool. But like, can you listen to this word too? I don't know any men in the room that are free that say like, you almost got to watch Instagram and looking at your wife with a side eye because you just want to make sure. Hey, I'm, I don't know them. You ever been there before? You watching a video and somebody says, who is that? I don't know. I don't know her. <laughs> well, you staring mighty hard. No, it, it just happened. My, I got a cramp. Any men in the room tell the truth? Okay, you're lying. No big deal. <laughs> if it's not you in here, the person next to you is struggling with their sexual identity. If it's not you, the person that's across the room, their marriage looks cute, but it's another mafia movie in the crib. If it's not your family, there's a parent over here that thinks their, their daughter or their son is a sunshine child, 
And your daughter's with, as they say out here, not my child, yes, your child. And if we don't have real conversations, church, you'll go to heaven and then you'll get this thing called all knowledge and you'll be frustrated that you wasted your time with surface level relationships. We have people in here that are dating that that's not your husband or your wife, so you're just wasting each other's time. We have people here that are watching right now, you're engaged and you're trying to cut corners to fit in her round hole, but God called you to be a square. And I can't live with myself showing up to any more weddings where I got to lie just by my presence. Oh, if you're married, don't run away because you, you need to smoke too because you made a decision. And God can give you the best years in the rest of your years, but you have to do this thing, which is following his, some I say, principles. Really quick, raise your hand if you're struggling. Everybody's hands should go up. Everybody, everybody's got stuff, but I don't know why it is when we walk in the church house, you try to fake like it's no big deal. For many of you, can I be honest? You don't have no search history. Because you made sure to delete it before you walked in because you're like, if I walk in this church, God's going to strike me down, right? Are y'all want me to move on y'all board? Number one reason why we have to talk about this is because we're supposed to defend the faith. Number two is because we have people that are trying to navigate a relationship with the holy God, but also trying to do that in a culture that's unholy. The third reason why is write this down. Because without biblical context, it is impossible for us to set a trajectory for our lives to live correctly. You cannot hit any target in your life without aim. And you will miss every target in your life spiritually if you don't use the spirit to aim. And you will miss 100% of the shots because you're using the world system to try to aim at a holy trajectory. So if we're going to do things of the spirit, just tell two people, say, grow up and let's just be about the spirit. Let's just, I know you don't really do it for real, but let's just be about the spirit. So here it is. For the next four weeks, this is my question to you. Can we let the word of God be the basis for relationships? Now, listen, there's going to be a lot of stuff in here that you don't like. Trust me, I don't like it either. But that doesn't mean that I can't, I, I'm, I, that doesn't mean that I'm not supposed to teach you the whole Bible. And churches right now are being full with all these people that are coming into the church because pastors refuse to teach the parts that they don't like. You have to teach the whole Bible. And that's what we're going to do today. Is that all right? Here it is. I want you to tell two to three people what my title is for today. Are you ready for my title today? Look at your neighbor and say, partner after permit. What if I were to tell you that the people that you pick outside of God, God does not cover that relationship. But I love him, but did God permit it? And it's not just relationships that are romantic. How many of you have ever went into business with somebody that you realized God's hand wasn't on? You moved in with somebody whose God's hand wasn't on. You want to know how you know? You walked out of your room and everything was gone. We're going to break down this conversation of relationships, not to be romantic or platonic, but just people that you know. So that way it touches everything. Here it is, point number one. Please write this down. God's process is for your betterment and not for your hindrance. Many people don't want to bring their relationships, their sin, their marriage, their dating relationship to God or to church or through his principles because you have been brainwashed to think that God is trying to keep you away from something. But rather, he's trying to make sure that you have a relationship that works better than the people that are around you. It's really interesting to me when people say that they love a person and that they love God, yet they do all of the opposite stuff that God said in the word to have a good relationship. They do things like justify living together, but they're not being matrimony or a ring. Well, we're just trying to save money, but that's carnal. But we're not sleeping together. Oh, we're just, no, it's not reduced to sex. You're living in the same house. You're acting as if you're married, and then you act as if you have God's covering, and you don't. Then the, when the relationship experiences rocky turmoil, you say, well, I can't believe God would allow this. God didn't allow this. God doesn't even recognize your relationship as lean in, legitimate. Come on now. Yes, 
So if you want the blessing of God, you got to follow his rules. Here's why. Second, Are we all right? Oh, y'all want to talk about grace? This is the real deal. I'm trying to make sure that you don't marry the wrong person and throw away your purpose. Sex is great. Trust me. I got one to prove for it. But sex wears off even in a good relationship. So what are you going to do when what used to feel good doesn't feel good anymore? Because if that's your basis, oh, y'all, are y'all all right? I can feel a pin drop. I'm glad I'm mature because before I would have cried, but today you're going to get this work. <laughs> Second Peter 1 through 3, the Bible says by his divine power, which means that the power that only God has. We talked about this before in our, in our sermon series about the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor say, you are powerless. No, no, no. Like, tell them that you have no power. Now finish the sentence, outside of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the power of prophecy. You are not a prophet. You operate in the spirit or in the gift of prophecy, but you don't get to own the gift. The owner of the gift is God, is the Holy Spirit. So that means that all power, somebody shout, all power belongs to God. Now I'm going to show you why what you just said is very tricky. Here's why. The Bible says that God has given us, some I say everything. Everything we need for living a godly life. If God wanted you to have a marriage in order to fulfill purpose, he would have given you one as a default when you were born. The Bible says God has given you everything, which means that you can fulfill the purpose that God has inside of you and never be married. But there's a younger generation that you have been lied to that the world tells you in order to move forward, in order to be an alpha man, you need to be married. No, God is telling you, even if you do not get married, even if you don't even get to experience sex, and I know there's some folks like, what are you talking about? It's the truth. You can fulfill everything that God has caused you to do because everything is on the inside of you. Where the enemy tries to pervert this is he tries to tell you, get married, then you can start. Hey, bro, get your body count up so that you know that you're a man. Or the Christian will just watch pornography because, you know, you're still a virgin. It's not, at least you're not sleeping with them. Oh, I'm talking, I'm in your house. It's okay. I'm going to keep reading your mail because it was my mail too. Because saved Christians are the most freaky people in the world. And you know how to use greasy grace to get out of stuff that will send us to hell. I'm not scared of none of y'all. It's my birthday. I'm grown now. I'm 31. Don't play with me. <laughs> the Bible says we have received all of this. How? By coming to know him, not by sleeping with them. You get everything that you need in life if all you had was relationship with Christ. But we make the other stuff try to make sense, like chains and watches and Louis and Birkin bags and all this stuff. And all of that is not going to keep you together. I can tell you a bunch of marriages where they have all of the stuff and no stuffing. They got everything that would make you feel jealous about their marriage, but their house is empty. They got everything on their body, got all the stuff, all the jewelry, Valentine's Day. They're going to buy a stupid, dumb rock that makes you believe that they're doing better than what they are, but there are empty words on the inside of his wife. So if you want true peace in your relationships and not just marriage, if you want true peace in your, in your friendships, people that will literally drop everything and pull up because they say, Joshua, you're not okay, we're pulling up. Then there's one thing that you got to be, and I want you to raise both hands if this is you. You got to be vulnerable. I know it's not everybody. I get it. I understand. I'm, I'm, I know Pastor Martin taught a message is 5%, but there are some of you that will be honest and be like, my marriage needs help. This lust demon is, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I can't go two days without watching, Pastor. And the Bible says that wherever you surrender yourself, God will show up and save. I want you to actually believe what the word of God says and not what I'm saying. So we're about to read a lot of Bible. Is that all right? Is that enough of an icebreaker for y'all? The rest of the word says we have received all of this by what? Coming to him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Genesis 1.26 says this, and for all of you that have been walking in the kingdom, you're tired of this verse, but we got to start from the beginning. 
Genesis 1, 26 says, then God said what? Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Now I'm gonna give you four truths that if you walk through these, it'll help you deal with your skepticism and your unbelief. And here's the thing, at our church, you can belong before you believe. I don't need you to believe because I can't make you believe. I can't make you tithe. I can't make you give. I can't make you worship. I can't do any of that. God has to reveal it to you and then you make an internal decision. And I'm sorry for any church that tried to tell you what to do as if them telling you would make you do it. You have to make a decision based off of what you hear. Here are the reasons why God is better than you. Number one, it's because God is holy. Write it down. What does that mean, Pastor Joshua? That means God is better than you. He's smarter than you. He's more good looking than you. I know some of y'all are sexy, but God, is, you know, he, he's the first love that you should have. God, God is a better person than all of us. What does that mean then? That means that if he is holy, that means that anything that is unholy, he can't be around. Does that make sense? Yes, so if you are a Christian, but your marriage or your dating relationship or your business partner, partner are doing unholy things, God will not cover you. It's not that he doesn't want to. The Bible says that he desires to give you the desires of your heart. But if you keep reading, because people like to cut off, cut off uh, uh, scriptures where they don't, where they're not supposed to stop. It says that he'll give you all of the desires of your heart according to his plan for your life. So you have to make sure that your desires match up with what God wants for you. So if you want it, but God doesn't want it for you, you got to go and get it for yourself. And then when you go get it for yourself, you got to maintain it for yourself. So the reason why the relationship is so hard, sweetheart, it seems like every day we just working through stuff. The question is, is are you doing unholy things and asking a holy God to die on the cross again for what was unholy? Somebody shout, God is holy. What does that mean? That means that God can't do wrong. God cannot lie to you, which means that God can't harm you. Like, so that stuff that you've been blaming God for, he left me and it's your fault. God is like, no, if you would have never hooked up with him, he would have never had to leave you and you would have never went through the heartbreak and then you wouldn't have been upset with me. But if you would have waited for the person that you're supposed to be with, he wouldn't have got married and now you wouldn't be seeing him on Facebook with the family that was supposed to be yours. Oh, I'm in your business. Because then we start talking about the woulda, coulda, shouldas, and if you woulda, woulda waited, then God would have given you what you needed. I remember I was dating this young lady before I was talking to Vanessa, and my dad said, stop, stop dating another man's wife in front of her. And she looked at me at the table like, <laughs> somebody say God is holy. Since God is holy, that also means another thing. In this scripture, it says, then God said, let us make man. So that means that God created us. So the second thing is that God is creator. What does that mean, Pastor Joshua? That means that since he created everything, he has the authority to do with it what he pleases. How many of you believe that God is holy? Okay. How many of you believe that God is creator? Now, since you said that God is creator, that means that everything that you're doing outside of the word of God, he is right to be upset with you. If he's creator, you, how many of you have children? You created them, right? How does it feel when your child tries to tell you what they want to do with their body that you created? I know, how, you ain't going to say it. You say, we will kill you today. Get together and make another one that looks just like you. And I'm going to be disrespectful. I'm going to give them the same name. I'm just going to use a J instead of a Y. There's no J in Isaiah. There isn't this one. God is creator. So when God created you and I, here's the crazy thing. He actually thinks he owns you. He actually believes that he owns your sexual orientation. Like God actually believes he owns your sex life. Isn't that not crazy that a person that created you actually believes that they own you? But we like God as father. We don't like God as ruler and king. We like Savior. Save me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. But we don't like, yes, I'll do what you say. Even if I don't like it. Oh, I won't be in this because even though the CNN says it's okay. Oh, I won't, I, I mean, you know, I won't do that because your Bible says it, but it seems like my other friends are doing better than me. It seems like once we get to the point, I feel the presence of God, and I don't need nobody to shout today. 
I feel like we are okay with God giving us things, but we're not okay with him taking, us, taking things away or keeping us from things that we think will help us, but ultimately want to destroy us. Have you ever wondered why you're depressed now, sis? What's the newest additive? Is it him? You used to serve in church. Now you can't make it to church on time. What's the newest additive, sir? Is it her? You used to love, you don't even know what your favorite color is anymore. Because God can't keep you from becoming one flesh with people. Because it's in the design. Oh, yeah, is this too much? All the parents in the back are like, I said this last week. I said this last week. <laughs> Somebody say, God is holy. Some of y'all, I wish I could see y'all face. Y'all so greasy and constipated and I love it because you don't like me. It's not me, it's the word. <laughs> Somebody say, God is, holy. God is holy. Number two, say, God is creator. God is creator. Raise one hand and say, God owns, God owns me. All of this. Everything from the rooter to the tutor, he owns it all. So he gets to decide where it goes. Since he owns this, he gets to decide what comes out of it. Since he owns this, he gets to decide what lives in here. Like, I'm trying to break this down for the person that's never heard this before. The God that you think is a mean, cruel God actually is trying to keep you away from stuff that's going to be mean and cruel to you. God is holy. God is creator. Here's the third thing. God is judge. So not only is God better than you, not only does he create you and feel that he owns you, the third thing is this, is that God is the ultimate judge of what is good and what is bad. Between Judges, 1 and Genesis, between Genesis 1 and Genesis 3, the Bible communicates 14 times that it was good. It was good, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good. That means that God gets to define how the creation should behave and the standard by which it should operate in. Number four. This is all just the intro, by the way. We haven't gotten to the meat and the potatoes. Are we all right? Anybody hearing this for the first time in your life, clap once. God bless you. You, you, uh, you, you, are, you have boldness. They don't want to clap. That's like when somebody asks, does anybody have any questions on this assignment? You look around so you don't feel stupid. I guess nobody else. No. And then you fail the class. God is holy. God is creator. God is judge. Here's the fourth one. You ready? Now, this is in your Bible. All in this one sentence. The fourth reason why... You should give your heart to Christ and allow him to rule your body, your thoughts, your sex life, and all of that. Is this number four? Because he's sovereign. Not only is God holy, <laughs> not only is God a judge, which he gets to choose what's good and bad. Not only did he create you. Here's the last part. He has the right to do with your body what he wants. He has the right to call what he wants marriage to be. So yes, that's fine. If you don't want to follow Christ, do whatever you want with your body. Do whatever you want with your identity. Do whatever you want to do with your orientation for the people that are watching online. If you don't want to live for Christ, go ahead. Do what you want to do. But if you desire to have the blessing of God and relationship with God, yes, sir. then you have to give everything over to God. Yes, sir. Come on, Pastor. And I can't tell you how many people that are dating that you think that we don't know but we know there's no God in your dating relationship. Because you slip up and you post stuff on Facebook as if we're not stupid. You post a picture, then he posts a picture, and it's the same cup on the same table at two different angles. Y'all live together. Y'all drive to church at different times trying to say, oh, we're, no, we know. How do you always smell like his cologne and he's walking in? Come on, church, don't do it because it's you. And we try to, to fake it, then we get married, and then we want to say we've been living holy the whole time. Stop. Stop. This is the reason why nobody trusts the church, because we're lying to them in their faces and saying that we worship a God who we don't even follow his rules. But I profess over, underneath the power of the Holy Spirit, not this church here. No. Shout, do it right. So you don't have to do it twice. Colossians 1 and 16. <laughs> For through him, God created everything, not just the trees and the birds, but like the principles. He created man and woman. And the reason why he created it that way is because he believes that's exactly what needs to happen. You can do whatever you like to do. And another thing in this sermon series, I'm not going to use, I, I'm, I promise you, nobody up here is going to use degrading communication. 
We're not going to use words that the church has used to like try to break you down. They think if they make a good punchline for Instagram, they're bringing people to Christ. And no, the church has hurt more people in the LGBTQIA community than they've saved. It doesn't mean that the life that they are living is right, but there's a way in which you communicate with another human being. They've made divorcees and people that had children out of wedlock feel that, that Jesus didn't die on the same cross for their sin and for their life. And if they really remember, their children were born out of wedlock, but now they're just saying like, oh, well, that was a different time. No, it's the same thing. You had sex outside of marriage too. So I want you to understand this. And if you don't like this, you could pick up your hat and your coat and stay in your seat. Listen, <laughs> Jesus died on the same cross for the people that we try to crucify them on. Well, Pastor Joshua, they, 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 they're same-sex attracted. And you watch pornography. What's the difference? The Bible says that there's no difference in between your sin and God's eye. It's just us that we try to put stuff. We, we try to put stuff on levels so that we can tell other people they don't deserve God's love. But for every person that you step back from, God steps back from you. God says stuff like this. He says, how could you turn away another person that I love? And then he'll say stuff like this. Did I turn away from you at your darkest hour? Last time I checked, when you were going through your stuff, I didn't push you away. So how dare you push away another person that needs God, not as much as you, because you were actually worse than them if we really. So if God is going to be the God of everything, we have to believe that he can be the God to everyone. I'm preaching good this morning. And because you are hetero, and you don't struggle like your other friend that loves Jesus who is same-sex attracted does not mean that God cannot be the same to them as he is to you. And if you don't believe that in this church, you're going to have a really rough time when God reveals this church to the world because they're coming. Here's another bubble to pop for you. They're already here. And they're being, glory, sorry, they're being saved they're being filled with the Holy Spirit. They are realizing that in order to prove that they love Jesus, they don't have to marry a person of the opposite sex. They can love themselves. So the transformation that God wants to have in your life is in you, not in how you treat other people. Really quick, because it's everybody here in the room. And if you don't lift your hands, you're being disobedient, but I don't care. You can do whatever you want with your life. I need you to lift both of your hands and ask God, to forgive you for judging other people that you thought didn't deserve Christ. It's everybody in this room. Go for it. Take some time. Those of you online, I'm sorry. If you're not lifting your hands, that means that you live in a rock. God bless you, Patrick. It's all right. No, but like I, there are people that I thought didn't deserve the grace of God because their sin wasn't as big or stinky as mine. But now that I know that it all stinks. Okay, we, we together? Is this good? For through him, God created Everything, colors, fruit, sex, it was his idea. It wasn't an accident. Oh, let's see. Oh, this fits. Oh, oh. No, God made that thing happen the way that it was because doing anything outside of the design of God brings death. The Bible says he made the things we can see and the things that we, guess what, can't see such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Now, here's the part that I need you to get before we talk about any type of relationships, any type of sex, romance, platonic, any of that. We got to get this. Slap two people say, you got to get this part or you're going to miss it. Tell, tell them, like, don't miss it. Like, this is the whole point of the sermon. Here's the thing. Read it with me. Everything was created through him. Now, here's the part. The last two words are going to mess you up because you've never read it before. Yes, he created everything, but guess why he created it? So your marriage got allowed for his glory. The children that he blesses you with is for the children he doesn't allow you to have are for your season of singleness where you're trying to find a man and can't. It's all for It's everything that happens is for his glory. Now this, ooh, I feel great this morning. Now this should be good for you as the Christian because now it gives you an out. Why are you single? God must, it, might not, it must not be God's timing for me. 
What the devil wants you, this is going to save somebody's life. What the devil wants you to believe is that you're single because of you. Now, I ain't going to cap to you. If you got some stuff you need to take care of, take care of that. Like, see, I don't need to go to therapy. You're wrong. Don't do that. You need therapists, multiple. But that means that if you're a season of singleness, it's not because God doesn't love you. You're single because he loves you. Because when you pray this prayer for God to send you somebody to marry, you have to believe that that person is also asking to meet somebody that's ready to be married. So why would God release somebody that's done the work to meet you who ain't done none a bit of work? Because he's not just keep, woo. God is not just keeping your promises when he allows you to meet someone. He's also keeping theirs. So what if you thought about this? The person that you're dating, the person that you sleep with outside of wedlock, the partner that you go into business with without God's hand on it, you are their first interpretation of who God is. You worship God, don't you? You follow him, don't it? You read your Bible, ain't it? So that means that when you say that we can do this and lay down, the first thing that they're saying, this must be what all Christians do. Since you do it, then this must be okay. Then there's the messy breakup, and then people don't blame you. They blame the God you said you served. If God loved me, he wouldn't have allowed this. But here's the thing. God will allow things that you don't align with. Everybody clap once if you're still alive. Clap twice if you want me to keep going. All right. My man couldn't even clap. He said clap. Clippity clap. God is judge, God is sovereign, God is creator, God is holy. So there is a divine order given to us on how to have successful relationships. Like it's, it's a surefire way of how you can at least build the foundation. Now, I don't want you to believe that if you do this, it's all going to work out. Because that's not true either. Because stuff be happening. You, you, you can't bank that you are doing the work and the other person isn't. Like one of the biggest red flags before you marry someone is if they don't do little things to better themselves before marriage. Like you need to know how she look and how she sound when she get angry before you get married. Because when you get married, here's another bubble. When you get married, you are marrying that person and you're saying you're okay if they never evolve past this state. That's what you're saying at the wedding. If she never gets sexier, if his body never changes, if she always acts this way when she's hungry. I know some of y'all hangry women because I'm married to one. <laughs> That's why my son at 2 o'clock, he doesn't even say I'm hungry. This is how my son cries. My son cries like, y'all never fed me every a day of my life. Y'all are trying to kill me. That's, what it's, that's, what he, that's how he cries. Y'all don't love me. My friend across the street is eating better than me. I'm like, you're a baby. <laughs> but there's a divine order that God gives us. Do this, then this. Then do this, then this. Once you've mastered this, do this. If you haven't mastered this, just stay here on this level. And then through all of that, then you get the person. But here's the thought choice, everyone. Marriage has never been, will never be, and cannot be the pinnacle of relationship for the kingdom citizen. The goal is not marriage unless God said so for you. Stop looking at other people's marriages and trying to like base your marriage based off of what God has given them the grace for. Because the only reason why their marriage is working is not because they're good, it's because God is breathing on it. And you can't make God breathe on nothing that he don't want to breathe on. <laughs> Buy the car that they have if you want to and watch you go into debt. God isn't good. No, you're living outside of your means. You're living outside of your means. Yo, you're living outside of your means. You need to go buy a Honda Civic. You need to go buy a Honda Civic. You actually need to catch the bus. You say that you want an alpha man, but then you don't want to allow him to go and get the world that he said he promised you. You want him to stay at home. Then you're upset because he's like, I was doing this before I. Now you want me to change the core of who I am and then married people say this, you know who you. And many of you get married to people that you knew you didn't actually want to marry. You just thought your time was up. And we have people here in the room 
You're about to make the biggest decision of your life. It's going to be the biggest mistake of your life because you believe that God can't do what he said in Exodus 4, which is redeem time. I'm going to stick right here just for a second. God can do in more, God can do in less time, in two years, than what you can do in 200. So that means, I feel my swag this morning. That means... That if you get married at 70, God can give you more grace and you can be more fruitful and more bountiful in 70 years at marriage than a 27-year-old can be with children, all the money, and all the cars. Here's the thing. You need to run your own race. I want to explain this and I'm going to get back into the word. When you decide to marry a person, go into business with a person, be friends with them, you are running a race that only has one lane. There aren't multiple lanes. Me and my wife are running a race in our marriage. We don't see none of y'all marriages. To be totally honest, we don't care. Because God hasn't given us the grace to run your race. So when you run your race, you don't try to sprint and try to be people. Then when you get to your assignment, you're tired. So we're just moseying along. If God desires to give us another child, for his glory. If he doesn't, for his glory. If God decides that we're supposed to downgrade in the house, I'm going to be upset. For his glory. But is there anybody here in the room saying, I don't care if your glory goes to a shack. I'd rather live in a box. I'd rather live in a box and have you than to live in 20,000 square feet and can't find you. I would rather live single and all this be dried up because I ain't never used it before than to be out here sowing my royal oats and ain't got no peace. Because let me pop the bubble. Your friends that are out here living the life, it's all a sham when they tell you that they love it. They have no peace. Matter of fact, those of you here in the room, you don't have peace as I'm teaching right now. And that's fine. Leave the church, but you can't leave God. I don't care if you leave AWC, but one thing you can't leave is this word. If you are in a relationship that started without God, run. If you're dating a person and there's no God in it, Quit today. But if you don't quit, it's your fault, not his. I feel safe in my seat. Y'all thought it was Mr. Rogers. I ain't got no cardigan on. It's a sweater, but ain't no cardigan. We all right, everyone? If God believed you needed a partner to be saved, he would have given you one the minute you received him at the altar. God said, you need me. That's all you need. You just don't believe when you see, you can sing the song that he's almighty, but you don't actually believe it. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. I hate that song. If it wasn't for your love. It's like Broadway. If it wasn't for your grace, I don't be without you. Stop. Y'all remember, okay. Lord, you, no. But then you actually start, actually, you're actually singing this, Lord, I don't trust you. Oh, no, we'll sing it. It's your favorite song. Lord, you made a mistake with me. God makes no mistakes. You were made beautifully and perfectly the way that you are. There are five things that God gave man before he even gave him a person. Five. You ready? We'll go through these quick. First thing that God gave Adam was himself. God gave Adam this thing that starts with a P, and y'all know me, they all gonna have P's because I'm an alliteration king. He gave him presence. God says in Genesis 2 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed what? Into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. As you read Genesis, you can assume that in between sentences, there's time that's being spent. So that means that before we even see an animal, before we see a tree, before we even think about Adam being with this woman called Eve, Adam was with God. Listen to this. God's presence is that God gave Adam access to himself so that Adam could establish a relationship with God. So if you don't have a relationship with God, you shouldn't be dating another person. What's the relationship with God, Pastor Joshua? Exactly. You don't even know where to start. You should be, I can't tell you. Let me give you some notes, though. If you can't pray, you shouldn't be dating. 
If you can't follow the voice of God when he tells you no, you shouldn't be dating. If the thought of living together enters into your mind, that's not the kingdom. And I don't care how you try to cut it. I don't care how you look at this economy. I don't care how you try to communicate it. Well, you know, that's from the Old Testament. So you mean to tell me that certain parts of the Bible are not okay? You just said that he's creator. He also created this book called the Bible. So that means that any thoughts that are unlike God, if you have those, you shouldn't be dating. Did you not listen to me and say that you're not wrong for thinking them though? You're just not ready to date. The first thing that God gave Adam was himself. And here's the coolest thing about it. If we never get to the other four, God's presence is enough. Why do you get yourself together in God's presence, then allow somebody from outside of God's presence to pull you out of his presence and think that you're going to grow at the same rate? You used to worship, show up to small groups. You used to meet your girlfriends for coffee to talk about Jesus. You used to read your Bible. Now you love him and now you're trying to prove to us that he's the right choice, but he does none of those things. Never read the Bible before. Doesn't know how to pray. And here's the thing. You think it's a joke until your marriage go through it. It's all cute, fun and games. You're trying to get to the marriage bed so you can do the deed. But then you realize you're sleeping with a person that can't even pray for you if you get sick. They don't know how to walk in your house and and you think that speaking in tongues is a joke. Let some stuff that got a tail and some horns walk. Let some demons start traumatizing your children and then you look at your husband like, what? And he pulled the Glock out. No, you need a husband that pulled that spiritual Glock out. out where they at? You think anointing them is weird. Are you really putting all, do you know what this oil represents? Then you marry them, have children with them, get divorced, and now you want to save man. Oh, you got qu- <laughs> Do it right the first time. Just stay single. Paul said it this way. Paul says, I wish I could be like me without a wife, just following the Lord. And the reason why I'm talking like this now is because I know that there are some parents in here, you're uncomfortable talking to your children for real. So show them this sermon. I'll be the bad guy. For many of you that don't know how to say that you need to break up with the person, tell them it's because of me. Well, Pastor said, I know because you, you don't have the boldness to be like, this isn't right. Just use me. But you deserve to marry a person that discerns what's happening spiritually. That when you walk in the house, they know, sweetheart, drop your bag, drop all of it. And we ain't going to sleep together, but we're going to pray. Give me your hands. Do you understand who you are? Do you understand that you are called by God? Why marry somebody that doesn't even know how to wash you with the word? Well, it says somewhere in there that if you give a man a fish, he'll learn to fish for a day. And then he'll start a fish business and make fish plates. Where is that? And if you have five pieces of cornbread and two pieces of fish, you can feed 20,000. No, you need a man that when he looks at you, a woman that when she looks at you, you need to go read Malachi. Oh, you don't know who you are? Go read Jude. Matter of fact, do you want me to read with you? Matter of fact, do you know how to read this Bible? I'm trying to tell you all the stuff that you think is ha-ha, no joke, is the stuff you actually need to find is important now. Yes, Teach, son, because it's going to be you. You ain't marrying no joker. And if it doesn't happen, I promise you. But she's cute and cute and can't pray. Forget this chair. The first thing that God gave Adam was himself. The second thing that God gave Adam was this. Listen to this. The second thing that he gave him was parameters. God says, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which was a relationship. God didn't create man because he was lonely. God made man because he desired community. He want, he's a good father. He's always been father. God didn't become father once he made children. He was father before. Yes, sir. But then he realized, like, man, I want some children to be able to be good fatherly too. So he created us. The Bible says that after God gave Adam himself, which is his time, which is his prayer, which is his response, the Bible says that he gave him parameters. Let's go to Genesis 2 and 16. Now, listen, this is two seconds after Adam has been made. The Bible says what? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying what? You may... Surely eat of every tree of the garden. Now, wait a minute. I think you got this mixed up based off of what you watched on cartoons. There was a, there was a good tree. There was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. No, there was fried chicken trees. He created everything, ain't it? There wasn't no Popeye's, so it was in there. All seven recipes, spices from KFC, it was all there. There was a ramen tree. Mm. 
there were seedless grapes that weren't bad for you. You do know when you eat a seedless grape, it's not real. I don't have to spit out seeds. Yeah, you also going to, you, you. Everything was in the garden. God said, you could eat from all of this. Just don't touch this one. And then you'll believe, well, if, why would a loving God, why would a gracious God put something in there that he didn't want us to trust, that he didn't want us to touch? Because he wanted to prove if you would trust him or not. Because you can't worship God without free will. If you don't have free will, it's called slavery. Christianity is the only religion where you have a choice in if you follow the God or not. Muslims don't believe they have a choice. They have to. And having free will, because some bad things can happen, that God's not good. No, God says that it rains on the just and the unjust. It's just rain. It's not happening to you. It happens to everybody. God says you can eat from all of this. Just don't touch this. God was saying something specific. God is saying this. Uh, okay, now look. Um, God says I'm going to give you boundaries so that you can practice this thing called obedience. How many of you have children? Now, if you are good to your children, do you allow them to put forks in sockets? Why? And gentle parenting won't work. Okay, Timothy. Excuse, excuse me, Timothy. Safe hands. Safe hands. Safe hands. No, no, no. Safe hands, Timothy. Safe, safe hands. What do you do? Timothy! And then you say words, but you ain't saying words. Y'all do it. Your face. Because you don't want them to be hurt. The reason why God wants you to know him is so that you don't get hurt with somebody else that doesn't represent him. Your boyfriend breaks your heart, not you're upset with God. And God said, I never wanted him for you anyway. So it's not me. So I'm putting these fences around you. You think it's to fence, it's fence you in. It's actually to fence the stuff I don't want to get to you out. The Bible says specifically that this is what God does. It says, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat from. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, it's not a physical death. God basically says that when you decide to do what you want outside of my design, then you die. So your relationship is now dead. And you're worshiping a God that can't breathe life into it because he didn't breathe life on it to begin with. And I don't know about any of you, your breath is just hot. It hasn't brought anybody else back to life. Some, do it do it now, because I know some of y'all are like, mm. Kind of like when somebody says, do you have any chapstick? The first thing you do is not hand them chapstick. You lick your lips. Dry lip, folks. God gives him para parameters. What are parameters? Parameters are the specific guidelines to protect his relationship with God. God said, I want relationship with you, Adam. So in order for us to have relationship, eat whatever you want. Just don't touch this tree. And also, I'm going to give you free will, which is the ability to choose the tree. But I pray that you actually choose me. Think about this. Does the person that you're dating, the person that you're married to, the person that you're in business with, the friends that you have, push you closer or further away from Jesus? That's simple. That's simple. If they don't push you closer to Jesus, you can't call them a friend. If they push you away from God, here's another question. Why would you want to marry them? Like, I know, I really want to know. I really want to know, because as a pastor, we tell you, don't, this isn't it. This is, not the, this is not good. I'm not saying she's not it or he's not it, but this version of them is not it. So give them some time, as Pastor Martin would say, to keep cooking. They rice ain't done yet. Like, let him keep cooking. He's not ready for you yet. He's not, but I love him. Okay. So will you come to the wedding? No. Oh, you just hating. No, I'm not judging you. I just can't agree. Because the Bible says in Revelations as a pastor, I get a double portion of judgment that y'all don't get. God's going to come and ask me and say, so you allowed them to get married and you stood in the wedding and you married them even though I told you it wasn't it? And I don't know about none of y'all. I don't want no smoke with God. So that means I can't stand behind what you call love, but actually it might be another four little word, which is just lust. So close your eyes. The top five people that you spend time with that are your homies, do they push you closer to God or not? 
Do you feel comfortable loving Jesus in front of them? Or do when they get in the car, you got to put on music that makes them more comfortable because they can't listen to something about the name Jesus. When they ask you for help, you don't feel comfortable using the Bible, so you got to take stuff from the Bible, water it down, use vernacular in order for them to get it. You're dating, and they would rather go to brunch rather than go to get some real lunch, which is here in the house of God. Like, this is the daily bread that you actually need. Go get chicken and waffles as much as you want, but chicken and waffles will not take care of a broken marriage 15 years in. Brunch cannot fix what the blood paid the price for. So if they don't, I'm trying to get y'all to understand. If they don't love Jesus, why are you with them? Unless you don't want to serve him. So make a decision today who you will serve. If you want to live for yourself, marry whoever you want. But you cannot knock on the door asking God for his benefits when you did not follow his principles. God, I'm going to build this relation outside of your factory with all your stuff. But then once it's made, I'm going to bring it to you and ask you to bless it. And God's going to look at it and say, I can't. I don't even know what these parts are. Let me move on. Y'all tired. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Why marry them if they're not married to your Jesus? He's not even saved. Why did he even get a chance to go on a date with you? I can save him. No, you can't. Because you can't even save yourself. You're the type to put oxygen on everybody else in the, in, the, in the plane and then pass out and be with Jesus. What happened? You didn't put oxygen on yourself, dummy. God gave him parameters. What did he give him? Somebody say presence. Then he gave him purpose. Then he gave him parameters. Then after that, God gives Adam purpose. The Bible says that he says this. Then the Lord looked at him and he said what? It is not good for the man to be alone. Now, God says this two times. The first time that God says it's not good for man to be alone, he doesn't give him Eve. He gives him work. God says it's not good for Adam to be by himself. Let, him give, let me give him a reason to live, which means that your spouse is not your reason to live. The person that you're with physically, your business partner is not the reason that you live. Let, let, let's go there since y'all looking at me in that tone of voice. Let's go. Then the Lord God said it is not good for the man to be alone, right? He says, I will make a helper who is just right for him. He's going to make Eve? No. So the Lord formed out of the ground animals. <laughs> out of the sky, he made birds. <laughs> then he brought the man to it to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. This is why, young ladies, you need to learn how to call yourself beautiful before he does. Because God doesn't think you're beautiful because your significant other thinks it. God called you beautiful because he created you beautiful. He just wants to know, do you know that you're beautiful even if he, nobody else ever says it? Really quick, some ladies here in the room just need to literally shout it out. I'm it. I'm it. Yes, sir, I, am. I don't need nobody to repeat out to me. I'm it. Why? Because I'm it. That's right. I'm it because I'm it. Not because of him. Not because he validates me. And here's another thing. Ladies, you can reach all that God has for you without a man. Amen. Name me one woman in the Bible that God used in a fantastic way who was married. And the husband wasn't jealous. If they were married, the husbands felt like their shine was being taken. But if they, that's why God mentioned to Esther, let me use you now when you ain't got no man that will try to talk you out of what I'm trying to tell you. So the reason why you need to go crazy in your corporate life now before you get married, because once you have kids and get married, your body is no longer your own. You need to make decisions in your singleness that you will not have the right to make once you get married. Because you do understand that once you get married, the Bible says that you are no longer your own. Yes, Paul says your spouse owns you and that you own your spouse. So you can't be looking for singleness while married. So really quick, if you're single, just raise your hand. I'm going to beg you real quick. If you're single, do single stuff now. Go on the trip now. Go with some girlfriends that love the Lord now. Like go on the trip by yourself. Now, buy the bag yourself. Now, because this is the thing, the level that you love yourself at tells the guy if he can be with you or not. Well, I can take you out to Chuck E. Cheese. What are you talking about? I eat out every week by myself. You got to do better than that. You have to build standards in your life so that it tells people who are not good for you that they should even come close. But the reason you attract who you attract is because you have no standards. I just can't believe 
another Tyrone pastor. Why won't he just send me a good one? It just keeps happening over and over. No, it's not him. You've married, you've dated the same guy four times. Look at him, same body type. They all bald headed. I'm not saying that's a big deal, but your dad is bald headed. We might need to go to therapy. Because if you've experienced stuff in your family that was traumatic, you'll try to make decisions to marry something that was better than what you had, thinking that it's better. And it's not what you're called to do. Oh, this is too real. We're only in week one. Y'all want me to finish so I can go home? I know some of y'all are like, yes, I'm tired. Tap dance on your last nerve. Purpose, listen to this. God gave Adam the specific instructions of what to do first. He says, you need to be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and have dominion. So this is what he says. God says, okay, Adam, now that you have all these things, I need you to produce something out of it. I need you to multiply, repeatedly do it over and over. Subdue, I need you to overcome it. And then number four, I need you to take control of it. What does that mean? That you need to take care of your lust before you get married. Because here's another thing, your addiction to pornography doesn't get better because now you have the license to have sex with your wife. Lust doesn't go, is this too real for y'all this morning? Y'all rather watch Oprah. I'm trying to make sure that you don't marry the wrong person or go into business with the wrong person. Just because you can doesn't mean that it's right. So that means that you need to work on yourself and work it out of you before you hook yourself up to another person. Because there are many people in the room, if they were honest, don't be honest, but there are many people that will tell you that they're married and they're struggling and stuff in marriage that they never struggle with in singleness. And they're not struggling with it because it's their problem, it's because they married the problem. So you need to come to your person whole. In the kingdom, one plus one equals one. Two whole individuals. Well, he makes me happy. That's not good because that means that if he leaves, now your happiness is gone. You need to be happy because you're happy. And it creates freedom in marriage. I don't care if Vanessa's happy because happiness is her choice. That's too strong. But if I have to make her happy, I'm going to be drained. Because then I'm not going to have no time to be happy for me. I'm wasting your time. Y'all want to get out. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. The Super Bowl is next week. We got to get out early, Pastor. I get you. Okay, okay. If you can't manage your own life in relationship with God, why would he give you another person to ruin their relationship with him too? The next thing that God gave Adam after he gave him work is that he gave Adam a presentation. Now, this is important. I am not going to tell you a lie. Can I be honest? Okay. There is not one person that was built perfectly as a match for you. It's not true. I almost believe that when people say, God told me, that wasn't, anybody that was your, your testimony who were married? Oh, yeah, I don't want to say nothing because you don't know what I'm going to say. That wasn't mine. That wasn't mine. Out of all the, the girls that I had talked to, which was only two before, before my wife, I had asked the Lord, her? And God didn't say nothing. <laughs> then I met Vanessa and I said, well, God, what about her? God said, if you like. God didn't tell me that's your wife. God also didn't tell Adam, Eve is your wife. Let me prove it to you. The Bible says in Genesis 2.20, it says, but for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. God sees that Adam does the assignment. God does everything that God called him to do. Then he presented a person. God, Adam did what? All that he was supposed to do. Then God presented Eve. Adam worked on himself and got to a point where he was healthy. Then he got Eve. Adam got over his addiction to pornography. Then he got presented with an option. Adam got through with the, the consciousness inside of his heart. He was no longer prideful. He was no longer angry. Then he got presented with Eve. What am I trying to tell you? That you cannot be presented with a good option if you still have unfinished business with God. God told you to go to school. Forget the degree. God just wants to know, would you finish something? You got books in your closet that you've written and won't publish none of them. Now you're asking God to send you a wife or send you a husband, but you won't even finish the first thing that he gave you. Adam would have never even known about a woman had he not got done answering the call that God gave him before. He got all the way through the line and said, okay, zebra, whoo. And then God said, oh, Eve. He went ape. B, C, D, D, all the animals, zebra. Oh. Because God wants you to find your mate 
while you are making something. God wants you to find who he's calling you to while you're doing what he called you to. You should be chasing after God so hard that when you look to your left and your right, nobody's keeping up with you. Then that means that they're not the one. Then when you start running hard and hard and then God says, look up, when you find somebody that's matching your speed, hold, hold up. And then you look over here and there's another person. And then you realize this, you have options. You married who you chose. You marry who you choose. There are people that make these decisions. If we're both not married by 50, if it don't work out, we'll marry one another. But you should be chasing after God so hard that when you start to try to talk to him and he tapers off, he wasn't for you because he's not meant to keep up with you, sis. You a Lamborghini with a Lamborghini engine. He's a Civic. If you try to put an engine from a Lamborghini in a Civic, one of two things is going to happen. The engine is going to be destroyed or the car is going to be destroyed. Sis, stop trying to give your oil to somebody that can't carry it. But he's cute, but he's not called. But he's awesome, but he's not anointed. So you should be chasing after God so fast that you are getting everything you need in life from fulfilling what he called you to, not a person. The Bible says that, this is good. The Bible says that Adam finishes calling all the animals and then what happens is God says that there wasn't a good person for him. So the Lord, God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the, upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. What does that mean, Pastor Joshua? That means that if you don't believe that God sent them, you should not be trying to be in relationship with them. They could work out, but that's not the person. You want to know how you know all my young men that are dating? You know when you know. And if you don't know, she ain't it. Do you love her? Well, you know, she ain't it. Why are you wasting each other's time? Okay. Like, I care. It's your life. Do what you want with it. Then the man said, at last... This is bone of my bones. Ooh, geez, don't that sound good? Flesh of my flesh. Why, some of y'all husbands are going to try to get you right tonight. Bone of my bones. Go on, Gerald. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> flesh of my flesh. Go on. Don't. I don't. <laughs> going to try to hit you with the cap of shoulders. Anyway. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman. Now, listen to how this works out. Because she was taken out of man. Adam established a relationship with God, mastered himself, mastered obedience with God, and then God approved for Adam to be approached by someone. But listen to what happens. God doesn't claim Adam and Eve's connection as good until Adam calls her his wife. God doesn't say that this is good until he makes the decision this is right. So all of you that are indecisive should not be engaged. Why isn't God blessing it? Because you haven't called her your wife yet. But we're engaged. But you haven't made up in, oh my God, this is too good for y'all. You haven't made up in your mind and in your heart that you actually want to marry them. You're just going along with the motions. So that means that if God would have brought Eve to Adam, Adam could have said, no. Nah. And God would have brought him Eve 2.0. Is that not what the Bible's, is that not what, it says that Adam said, yeah, 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 da, yeah. <laughs> Do any married man know what I'm talking about when I say that? Yeah. She had a baby. I'm still like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of it. Yeah, don't take nothing. Yeah, all of it. Adam decided, then God blessed his decision. Because God doesn't want to get caught up in you being able to blame him for who you picked. God don't want you to be able to say, well, God, it's not working out. You picked them. God said, no, -uh, you did. You said bone of my bone. You said flesh of my flesh. So now that you're married, now instead of leaving, I got to give you some tools to make it work. Last thing is this. After God gave him all of those things, can you put up my... my uh, my video, please. God gave him, somebody say presence. Presence says that 
Adam walked with the Lord in the cool of the day. How do we know that? Because when God comes and they've already eaten the apple, what does he say? He says, Adam, where are you? It's not a question of geography. It's a question of heart posture. He says, Adam, we, had, we did all this work. You named all the animals. We had relationship. Then you met her. Why Adam is in trouble is because God spoke to Adam first. So men, yeah, I'm the man. It's true, but you're the first one to die too. God comes to you for your household. He doesn't come to your wife. He comes to you. If there's a bump in the night, you don't tell your wife to grab the gun. You should, even if you ain't got no drawers on, grab the sheets. And it's you. You signed up for this. Not just the sex. You signed up to protect. You signed up to go to God for them. You also signed up to answer to God for them. God gave them presents. He says, Adam, walk with me. After he gives them presents, give me the next one, please. He gives him parameters. He says, okay, now that you know how to live with me and walk with me in a space where everything that you have and you need, real quick, let me tell you how to use all this stuff. Then after he gave him his presence, then what did he get? Parameters. He gave him purpose. He said, okay, you know how to be with me. Now you know what it takes to be with me. Now show me what you can do. Show me and become the type of person so I know who to send you. The reason why you need to follow purpose is so that God can send you a person that actually matches what you've completed. You need to finish some stuff so that God can, this is too good this morning. You need to finish some stuff so that God can look at what you have finished and say, based off of what they finished and how they did it, this is who they need to be with. So you can't ask God for a great business partner and you don't even have a business plan written. Great idea, but it's not on paper. Well, God's going to bless it. He's not going to breathe on it because he's going to give you something based off of what you somebody say finished. Okay, cool, Adam. You did all the work. You created all of it. Now, after you have purpose, now I'm going to give you a presentation. Based on the work that you did, I'm going to present to you a package, and you get to choose if you want to open it or not. But here's the thing, Adam, you can only open one package at a time. So for those of you that are here in the room, you're dating multiple people, you're married, and you're sexting, or you're DMing in the Instagram, the Instagram, I'm old. Why did I just say the Instagram? You're DMing, you're deleting messages, you're trying to make sure that you don't, that your wife doesn't know. You have a protection screen on your phone and you're married, which is ridiculous. You have a passcode on your phone and you're married, which is ridiculous. My standard, you make whatever one you want. But my wife, I didn't want to marry someone that had to hide something from. Why would you want to live that way? I got to put my phone away when my wife comes. There's some funny stuff on there. And when you're married in a healthy relationship, you got a good wife. She'd be like, her booty big, look, 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 look. And you'd be like, <laughs> then you have... Then you have the conversation, it ain't real. And then you look at your wife and you say, it ain't yours. Because <laughs> we're free. Y'all going to get free one day. Presence, be with me. Parameters, this is how you act around me. Purpose, this is what I want you to finish. Now that you've finished, I'm going to present you. And now once you've presented and you've picked, now I can give you permission to live the life that only I can give you. So here's how we end today. No altar call. This is it. 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 it. The person that you're dating, the person that you're currently sleeping with, because I got to say that because the person that you're married to, your best friend, your sis that you go and ask to help you do stuff, my question is this. Based on all the stuff that you've learned in the Bible, if you're going to allow the Bible to be the standard, Does God permit it? Does God get glory every time you lay down together to do the deed? When you have sex with this person, is it worship unto the Lord? Does God look at it and say, that's good? Or does God look at it and say, that's not what I intended? The person that you're dating, the person that you're engaged to, if you're married, you have a totally different line of instructions that you're going to get in a couple weeks. I'm not trying to keep you on a cliffhanger, but the Bible says that irreconcilable differences are actually a choice. You get to make a decision. And you do know that when you marry somebody, it's not a feeling, it's a choice. I want to pray a specific prayer. I know this was a lot, but remember I gave you a disclaimer. I gave you a disclaimer. I understand that there are a lot of situations here in the room. I have absolutely no idea. I've never walked through divorce, never walked through infidelity, I've never walked through 
being a person that doesn't know how to communicate. I'm an over-communicator. I think that's the reason why we have the marriage that we do. I come home and say, I looked at her. Oh, God. I just tell everything. I've never had to deal with being afraid of my spouse because I don't know how they're going to react if I tell them the truth. I've never experienced that. But you know to know who has experienced it? You. For somebody here in the room, today was a hard message, and I get that. And you're not going to come back next week. I get it. We're a polarizing church. You're either with us or you're not, which is okay. But there's somebody here in the room hearing this message today. You see light at the end of a tunnel that you haven't seen light in. And that's what I want to pray for. I, I want to ask you to do something that might be a little bit scary. If you heard this, I feel the presence of God. If you heard this sermon today and you're trying to figure out what's going on inside of me, but something feels like I need to do something about it, I want you to stand on your feet. I see you. 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 